Sam, what, what motivated me to come down to see you guys? No one's ever interviewed me about this. It was within hours of your resignation, there was a, a really toxic article put out by Rick Stepp. Mm. And Rick Stepp's always been a primary source for WikiLeaks facts and possibly fiction as well. But within two hours, you and and Kaz were a whacker, were being compared to Don Scheidt Berg yeah. and, and Birgitta Jon's daughter. Mm -hmm. which Wonderful woman, by the she way. She is, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've always um, had trouble mm -hmm. not liking Birgitta. Mm -hmm. I've always got into trouble mm -hmm. about trying to rehabilitate her. <laughs> but because I've never really seen anything <coughs> she's done wrong. And I don't think she's the one that needs rehabilitation, to be honest. No, and she's done lots of wonderful things. Yeah. You know, the, the whole of the media. <coughs> movement in, in Iceland, the Icelandic mm. uh, Modern Media Initiative and uh, her, her assistance uh, with uh, the production of Collateral Murder yes. and, and everything that she's done since. You yeah. know, she's, she's a member of parliament. Yeah, and she's, uh, she's a good poet. Uh, well. She's a great poet. She's artistic. <laughs> she's a single mother. Yes. She has a child with a disability. Uh, she's quite extraordinary. Yes. It's a bit of a sidetrack. It yeah. is not because yeah. it lead, led me immediately to uh, become retrospective mm. in my judgment of, you know, I knew you guys and I knew that you had been working as hard as I had, yep. giving it your whole life and soul and all your resources, yep. um, had been extremely successful. Mm -hmm. um, the campaign was going extremely well. Yeah. And we'd done a lot together. We, you know, we'd been through the underground tour together. We'd we'd gone, done ICR. Yeah. And our thing at the Gaelic Club, just mm -hmm. more and more crowds coming, and it was just like we were riding on a crest. Oh, it was building. That only could lead to a massive success. Yeah. And then this, you know, this enormous wave of the unexpected. You know, and I guess you, you guys had seen more of it coming, mm. but uh, for someone like me, it was kind of the last thing I expected mm. is veering. I could see that the party was veering to the right, mm. but, or trying to be neither one nor the other, which, was, you know, even that was criticised by certain members that, that yeah. sounded naive and... But suddenly veering to the, ex, you know, the far right, mm -hmm. supporting the far right, even if it was just a strategy, yeah. it just seemed to me to be not only putrid but stupid. And then the next really bad move was this Rick Step article within hours, all in the wrong order as well. It just, you know, felt so much like an insider yes. writing this, not yeah. some some guy over on the other side of the world in a wheelchair, possibly in prison. Mm. How could he be writing about those? Mm -hmm. Rick Bent, how could he be writing about those events as they unfolded? Yeah. So uh, I just knew that there was something really wrong. And I did yeah. send an email to somebody saying, get that fucking thing down as quickly as possible you know mm. this is just throwing petrol on the, on the fire yeah um stop it now this is more dirty laundry yeah and it doesn't matter whether it's your real name or not that's what it is well i guess the hurtful thing about that article um is the insinuation that we were thieves and um you know stooges or betrayers or saboteurs uh when actually what we had done was to stick to the principles that WACA had been founded on and that we had agreed to join the party on, yeah. which was to be transparent and accountable and seek justice. Mm. And so we, we became, ironically, the whistleblowers and got treated by not only the WikiLeaks party but Julian and WikiLeaks. Mm in the same way that other whistleblowers that have blown information to him yes. are treated by the mainstream media, except it was coming from our own side yes. and our own people, yes. you know. That, that was the really hurtful bit, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. rather than being honest and stepping mm -hmm. into the light and saying, okay, something is seriously wrong here that all of these great people just walked out, yeah. and rather than attacking us and calling us traitors, and cowards, as John Shipton did during our vote mm. on the National Council, um, that Julian and other members of the party would have had the courage to step forward and go, okay, we really messed up. Mm. Let's mm. sort it out. 
but cowards, cowardly to take a risk that the, you know, preferencing the far right and Nazis mm. wouldn't destroy the base, mm. wouldn't make everybody leave the party, but did they want you to risk that? Is that where you had to have courage to do something incredibly stupid? Yeah, destructive? well, destructive. Well, you know, we, I think we talked about this last time we spoke, we advise repeatedly not, not to do that for those exact reasons that um, I think that my email that ended up in Crikey uh, in response to Julian's desire to have us rubber stamp and him veto, mm. um, I, I said in that, this, this is insane, you risk alienating your base because, and this is, the, this is the thing about this party that I think reflects on a micro level the very manipulation and, and geopolitical games that go on on a global level. Uh, in the sense that the WikiLeaks party used the uh, piggybacked off the work of the supporters and the volunteers in this country mm, mm. to form a party, uh, and then when they thought that they had created enough ego and hype that they didn't need to rely on their uh, hardcore base of the last three or four years, uh, but were free to perhaps pursue their own agenda, mm -hmm. uh, they um, turned on their base. Mm -hmm. And whether they want to acknowledge it or not, the majority of the base in this country, particularly in Victoria and New South Wales, was some description of what would be described in the old school paradigm of left-right politics as left-leaning. Definitely. And the right-leaning people that supported Julian were small L libertarians. Mm. Uh, now, what you have in power at the moment is the equivalent of the Tea Party and George Bush's administration in Australia. Mm. That is not small L libertarian, mm. you know. Yeah. So, what I find really fascinating when you step, now we've had time to reflect and step back, mm. is actually what they did was exactly what everyone who's come before them has done. Mm. No different, not unique, not fresh, not new paradigm, not beyond the binary politics, not beyond left or right. They did what those in power have been doing to the 99% for a very, very long time. Mm. They took the base, they took the emotive components, the heart of the grassroots community, they got that group on side, and then they used that group to position themselves in a way where their egos took over, and they thought they could just dismiss that as mm. actually being real. Mm. Um, now, that's what happens all the time. Mm. Mm. That, that's how the power elite work. Yes. Obama you know, was elected on a platform of, of actually protecting whistleblowers, of ending wars, of acting on climate change, all of those things. And he's just been nothing but uh, an extension and acceleration of the military surveillance state. Yeah. Uh, he's continued to torture people, you know. So how is how is the situation that took place in this little country, in this little spot that means fuck all mm. in the global scale of things, how, how is it that we have this behaviour happening on this level in the very heart of what triggered the movement? And why is it that the only people who stood up for the original values of that movement and their base have been ostracised, smeared, alienated, attacked publicly? I've been attacked publicly by Julian now for two and a half months. Mm. Yeah, I know. Well, I think I have a short answer for that, mm. and that is possibly that the people like John Chipton were always like that. Yeah. And you know, it was con it was a convenient move. There's also a kind of a distance, a, a tragic distance, mm. when you get Greg Barnes talking about the average punter, and uh, me tweeting back to him. Uh, you know, somebody has to explain to Greg that the WikiLeaks uh, voters are not average punters. That these are extremely. I didn't go any further than that. Mary mm. Costacates uh, retweeted it. But what, what was implied was that, that they're an extreme, and other people have stated it, including um, John, John King, that they're an extremely educated group, yes. that we were all turned in to citizen analysts. Mm. We were all turned into investigative journalists, citizen yes. journalists. 
Now, and we had all been taught to dig below the surface, dig below a facade of lies. Yeah. And suddenly I found that we were, you know, we were confronted with this within the very party that we'd been su supporting. Mm. And it, I could see it emerging for some time, mm. that there was a disdain being mm. expressed for the Greens yep. for, since about June. And I was starting to worry about our relationship with Scott Ludlam. I was uh, more worried about the disdain being expressed for the National Council. I didn't hear so much about that, yeah. but I did hear constantly, uh, as long as we don't preference the Greens, mm. and I was worried about what was going to happen in WA. Mm -hmm. um, but the funny thing was, and the strategy was, was um, I, I got a call. The night before I came down here, I got a call to shut up on social media because I had started a long... This is after we resigned. Yeah. 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 Uh, yes. So I had started a long discussion, which turned out to be a very long thread, about 70 comments mm -hmm. on Jerry's statement mm. about it not being an administrative error. And before that had been all silence or happy elves yeah. continuing with the, uh, the party slogans. And mm. everybody um, shell-shocked but an unspoken rule that you couldn't talk on the Facebook wall, either of them, about this. Yeah. So I started that and got an enormous response, and then I got a call from, from John Shipton, mm. and he said, you know, shut up. <laughs> this is so damaging, what you're doing. Just remember why you're doing this and who you're doing it for, and stay away from those coup makers in Melbourne. And it was too late, I'd already bought my ticket because I'd already become very angry mm. at the persecution that started. Mm. The, the, the spin, yeah. the vicious lies, yeah. you know, how destructive was this? And I was, I was talking to John already about coming down here for peace talks and he mm. was saying, we're not at war with anyone. Well, oh yes you are, you know, who's Rick Step, mm. you know? Um, and who have they always spoken for, you mm. know, and about? So. Uh, so I noticed that from that moment on when I came down here, I'd been told not to speak to you. You and Kaz had been told not to speak to Gail. Yes. I believe Gail was told not to speak to either of us. Yes. So there was this kind and so of... And so was Cassie as well. I'm yes, sure. Cassie yeah. as well was told to just disappear yeah. for a while. So I, what, what, the way that this rift was achieved was almost on a one-on-one -on -one basis of mm. telling people that they weren't allowed to talk to each other. And all of the women... All of the powerful women, you know, all of the, the, the powerful women in the group. Yes, some, some of whom really disobeyed, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, how can you resolve an issue like this with silence? You can't. I mean, silence is just what's going to, you know, that builds up. Um, paranoia yeah. that builds up hatred for the other side. I grew up in Belfast, you know, mm -hmm. seeing mm -hmm. Protestants and Catholics not being allowed to speak to each other, yeah. having walls built between them, going to separate schools, mm -hmm. working for different companies, and that's what perpetuated war, mm -hmm. civil war. So for me, that is not the way to resolve something. But of course, you know, what I was later to discover that was that there had been subterfuge, and you know, that could not come out. Mm. You know, there was evidence that what you guys had voted on had been manipulated and changed and tweaked and retweaked the next morning. Yeah. So yeah, that's come out later very explicitly in a mm. film. Mm. Um, and I was uh, glad to see that as well. Yeah. But uh, just me tell too. me a little bit more about how you felt, you know, after all this. Like, how did mm. you feel personally about it? Ah. Uh, well, um, I, I think at the probably the lowest point I I considered uh, pretty much quitting doing any form of activism outside of my job with an environmental organisation, my day job. So I I just considered just putting everything down and stopping, maybe spending more time with my kids, yeah. maybe um, saving some money. <laughs> Uh, having some spare time to read all those books that are piling up, you know, I, I, I thought about it. Uh, and it's really funny because my partner just laughed at me. <laughs> well, he knows you. Yeah. And, yeah. Can't so. keep a good dog down. <laughs> no. Well, that's the thing, when you're actually doing something because your heart tells you that we are in 
the most uh, epic change of cycles on this planet. You know, we're at this crossroads. Mm. We're at this crossroads financially, we're at a crossroads politically, democratically, environmentally, resource-wise, technology-wise. Every single component of our culture and our civilization is at a massive crossroads. Mm. And it seems that it's going to fall to uh, those of us that are alive now and, and perhaps you know my children as, as they're older to complete the job to turn us into a new direction or accept a global fascist corporate ruled fossil fuel dictated state that global state mm. that will simply devour the entire planet and and that will be it mm. it will take forget the fact it will wipe out the human race and and all of those components it will take nearly a million years to fix the damage done yeah. to this planet yeah. if at all so yeah. Um, I, I, you know, so when I think of it like that and I thought about quitting and not doing anything and, and the question that came to my head was a piece of um, chalking that I'd seen in a picture on the internet which said, what will be our legacy? Yeah. You can't give up. No, you can't give up. But I, I felt personally, yeah, I just felt devastated. But you had a lot of support, didn't you? Yeah. I, you well, had more support <clears throat> than you did have criticism, yeah. really. It's funny because we just Not had... Not initially, but once the interviews, the first interviews came out, things yeah. really started to turn around. Well, we did the... Um, we went away for the weekend and, and did a, a, a WACA retreat for activists, some training and inspiration and stuff. And one of the questions that we all had to answer when we first got there was, what was your highlight and low light for 2013? <laughs> <laughs> and so many people in the room um, responded with the low, uh, the low light being their involvement in the WikiLeaks party yeah. stuff. Yeah. But I responded that the WikiLeaks party stuff was both the low light and the highlight. Yeah, for me too. And the reason for that, besides some of the awesome stuff that we achieved within uh, the, the, the fundamental work we did within the campaign and with the volunteers and stuff was the lessons learned and, and that was having to go into deep going into the void yes. and going into deep grief and reflecting for the first time in three years on what has this journey been about for me yeah. and for all of the people that are working with me and around us, mm. you know, mm. what does it really mean? And I can only answer it from my perspective, but I found that it meant the same for many people from WACA yeah. and our associated friends, uh, was that we started off doing one thing and we uh, only recently realised that we're actually building a movement. Yeah and that the, the current left mm. has uh, devoured its support and, and, and abandoned and actually it's now up to the citizenry mm. not to respond in an electoral political way but to respond by forming a real political voice and movement within the community. Yeah. And so while there were some incredibly personally uh, painful feelings of betrayal and just heartbreak uh, mm. at what people would do. It was also such a clarifying experience. Mm. And now that I've come out of that really emotional, I was, I look back at the video that I did with you and I was so deeply wounded still. Mm. Oh, and I definitely. think a little bit in shock yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, but what I actually realized is that, you know, what we've been doing is building community and um, allowing each other to be empowered mm. and allowing each other to collaboratively and collectively choose to act together or yeah. autonomously. Yeah. Yeah. And there is no judgment in that and mm -hmm. that's what's different to what's happening at the moment both within uh, parts of the uh, campaign communities mm. uh, but also within electoral politics and unions and stuff. So. Yeah, it turned out to be a, a blessing in disguise because it uh, enabled me also to communicate with other extraordinary 
um, advocates and campaigners around the world that have had similar experiences. Yeah. And it's opened up new understandings of what it is that we can do together as a community, both locally and globally. Mm. And I think that if this whole WikiLeaks party thing hadn't happened, where we had to make a very difficult choice and then reflect on that choice and own, own that choice, yes. um, that I you know, would be disappointed at where I would be right now, even if we got some in, someone into the Senate. Mm. Uh, uh, I think it's clarified for me that the current system of electoral politics uh, is not ready and that the movement is not ready. Mm. Uh, and so things have to change in both mm. before uh, we can form a strategy of, of how to tackle that. Yes. And we have to build and... So on that level, it's been a really amazing, clarifying experience to go, no, I stand by what we want to protect and I stand by all the things that got us to this point. Yeah. Uh, the, the most personally hurtful and disturbing component of the time since I last spoke to you, which was just after we resigned, uh, is the fixation um, that Julian has developed on personally attacking me. Mm. Uh, because, you know, I have a very good relationship with his mother. Yeah, yeah. And I know a lot about Julian yeah. and there is a lot about him that is extraordinary yeah. and that he's faced hardships yeah. and I understand him yeah. on that level through his mother, yeah. not through him. I don't know him personally as well. Uh, so to feel like someone is not only a fellow Aussie that you want to help, yeah. which was the impetus, mm -hmm. and to help his mother mm -hmm. who's trying to save his life. Um, but to also want to help someone who is interested in achieving what I thought were the same um, aims yes. in terms of justice and liberation and self-determination and free flow of information, all those things that WikiLeaks does. Mm -hmm. um, to have that person publicly turn on you in front of your global friends and community. Yes. Mm -hmm. and call you a power vehicle and a front for the Greens and then the Socialists and to say that you have misused your own resources. <laughs> Damn, well, was, I'm misusing my own stuff. Well, he was trying <laughs> to give the impression that yeah. those resources belong to WikiLeaks. And, Which they don't and that's at a, all. That's actually a very, very painful issue for me as well as you, I would mm. imagine, and, and Kaz Cochran because we put so much of our own money into this. So much money, so like much. over $10,000. Well, I'm about, yeah. You're probably well, much more. Much more than that. Yeah. Uh, over, and, you know. But for me, with three kids. Two years' work as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not even claiming for all the whacker work. No, not at all as I, but it, it cost me about $20,000. Yeah, yeah. Doing that round the world thing. And, yeah. you know, the fact that you are giving more than you can afford. Yes. And then suddenly, to see your your colleagues who are doing the same thing being accused oh hang on hang on yep. <laughs> dropping things being accused of misappropriating resources that they have paid for yeah. and then Julian pretending that they belong to WikiLeaks you know with the purpose of getting other people to attack you yeah but um, you spoke to me a while ago that you had um, you had uh, Begita reach out and she became yeah. very worried that you were getting personally attacked because yeah. she had been attacked individually in yes. that way as well and yes. she could see it going the same way. Now from what I remember you said that the, the, that the problem um, that as she had articulated it was that she had been trying to get a more horizontal democratic structure going mm. and suddenly she was accused of of treason and, and and in fact that's kind of what was happening with the WikiLeaks party too mm. that really what we had was a national council um, mm. and according to the Constitution it, it was a democratic structure mm. that uh, you know there is a little bit of a gray area but you know it, the, the National Council's decision mm. collective wisdom was supposed to guide the party yes uh, and and in fact in the end it just, the way it turned out was that there was just this executive decision to completely override them and not even tell them 
that that was going to happen with absolute stealth. And once again, that people complained about it and tried to do something about it, that got crushed. Yep. Tyrannically, you got, um, you know, it was, you got it right in the face, quite loud. Well, then resign. Yeah. Oh, know? yeah. It was really bullying. You, I, also was really got, bullying I also you. got told that, you know, I would be reduced to a fringe dweller. Yes. Um, I was told repeatedly before we resigned, in the few days before we resigned, that we should stop saying the things that we were saying. We needed to be careful of defamation. Um, yes. You know. I saw, <laughs> I saw that quite a lot, and Martha Mitchell did comment on being um, pursued that way by, by Greg Barnes. Yeah. Every time she made a comment, it was, you know, be careful, that could be interpreted as defamation. Yeah, that's Greg Barnes' that's, um, modus operandum for trying to get you to shut up, basically, yes, as a lawyer. Without mentioning any names, we were well looked after too. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we shouldn't at this stage. No. But, um, yeah, I mean, but there are other things that, that, that really shocked me, and, that, and, and one of them... Julian's attacks shocked me. Well, what, what, sh what, what just floored me was when I came down here, and you guys started talking about Wikicoms, <laughs> and I didn't know what that, you know, what, what do you mean that you had been asked to send bills to this company? Yeah. And then suddenly I discovered that was one of the parties that uh, I had been asked to acquire as a possible site uh, for the Wikileaks party back in January. Yeah. Um, and I had acquired six sites with the, with the belief that they would be used eventually. One of them was called Wiki, Wiki, wikiparty.info. You know, they were all possible names. One of them was called Julian Assange and Wikileaks.com and dot, uh, dot, uh, .info as well, and others. But there was yeah. one called Wikicoms.info, and ten days later, apparently, John Shipton started up a private company mm. um, with that name, mm. and, you know, using the... He asked me to pass over control of the site to, to Matt. Mm. Um, but I had no idea what was going on there, that there were shares and that... No idea the company existed, in yeah. fact, and that there were debts as well. Yes. Now, there are still, debts now still. and no, what appears to be ostensibly no intention to pay. So, you know, I've been advised, I've been legally advised to, to ditch uh, or to, to get rid of those sites as quickly as possible. I'm not going to do anything destructive. Mm. But, um, you know, I'm very uh, equitable and reasonable about it. But, you know, they, that and the payment for things done, there's just no reply, comes back. Mm. It's really like, you know, it's really cowboy behaviour. Mm. There's something quite irrational, you know, and I did in an email write to John Shipton, you know, stupid is actually worse than putrid. Mm. <laughs> if, you know, if you're going to think about it that way, yeah. what was all this for? Exactly. To make a monumental mistake. No, to establish a quasi-political party that could be a PR machine for Julian. That that was the aim. Yes, I know, but it needed... I mean, John just... once it's cheap. John people said to me once, that way. Well, John said to me once, I don't do failure, right? Mm. And so the night of the election, I said, well, you just did. Mm. You know? And what they succeeded in doing was getting the right wing into both houses. Exactly. Which was what I was fearing. Yeah. It's what we were all fearing. That's why it's one of the reasons we didn't want to be part of it anymore. It was like... No nah. opposition, no balance. We, we offered several solutions, which was disendorse uh, New South Wales and WA and run with Victoria. Mm. That would have solved all of their problems. It would have focused the energy on Victoria. We could have asked people to come down for election day to help out. Yeah, uh, It would have resolved the issue of the problems that uh, the subterfusion that went on with the preferences yeah. uh, and I was told that I was talking madness by John that, that I wanted to do that they had done something mad and now you want to do something madder yeah was what he said yeah I heard that yeah so uh, that to me seemed like the most logical solution I read that a <laughs> <laughs> break for a minute. Cut. <laughs> I'm going to get a cigarette. <laughs> I have to be careful about what I say. <laughs> There's so much trying to get me to admit things on the phone when I rang him up to abuse him. <laughs> well, cute. yeah, that's the hard thing. Sometimes you hold so much stuff in your head, you've got to go, oh, God. 
you got to lash out. Oh God, I've lashed out so badly. You wouldn't believe some of the messages, text messages and emails I've sent in, especially on election night. I don't usually swear. Fucking you. <laughs> you've done it now. Now you've done failure. And um, uh -huh. this is all going to get cut out. So. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and he, he replied to me, thanks so much for your kind wishes. Infuriating. Mm -hmm. But I've written long ones, you know, about um, I abused him for saying that Gail had uh, been reading out to Cassie. What did he say? That's, that? a, that's a completely unacceptable. He said, "You're." Um, that's all he say. And um, and he said, "I've never even watched." Uh, Sean Bedlam's films, or the, uh, or or the others, and and I just replied, "You're lying." Yeah. Because he'd logged on to um, he'd logged on to Gmail on one of my browsers. Yeah. And he, he his password wasn't in there or anything. Yeah. But when I went to YouTube, that was him. Right. So I could see all his viewing history. <laughs> I've logged everything out now. So yeah. I didn't want to have any. You know, but I, I that was there yeah. since January. Yeah. What John was watching on YouTube, and he watched Sean, and he watched you, and he watched, he watched Leslie. As soon as they came out, really? Oh yeah, he watched them all, and then he, he tried to tell me that he had no time to that for that kind of crap. You know, so yeah. he was his lying, lying, lying. You know, and just two words. I just sent two words back. You're lying. Yeah. Mm. But, um, yeah, well, I suppose we can go back to stuff that we're not going to cut out. Um, so, so what do you think is going to happen if Julian runs in Western Australia against Scott? Will he come up with a super strategy? Like, we're, I'm going to, I'm Julian Assange, and I'm going to definitely make sure that the preferences go to Scott this time, uh, like I wanted to the last time. Uh -huh. He'd be pretty stupid to do that. I don't think the Australian uh, left that is the base of his support would have any tolerance for that campaign slogan at all. I reckon it's his only hope. Oh, I think he would get massacred by the I left. I know. Yeah. I know. I mean, he's, he's beaten whatever way he does it. Um, I think he his only do that, hope is to stay out of politics. Stay, you know, this... And the... <laughs> This is the thing, the, the, I've been reflecting on the bigger things because yeah. I, I'm so, I've been so attacked and I'm... Party politics, you mean? No, I'm not focusing on party politics at all. No, you mean that, uh, sorry, that Julian should stay out of party he politics. He should stay out of party politics mm. completely and, and, you know, this was my concern with it at the very beginning and the way that I approached it as a campaigner and activist was... This is a tactic with a potential opportunity for a group of citizens to own a political movement, mm. which hasn't happened in a really long time in this country. Yeah. And based on the kind of concepts more around the Democratic Party yeah. than the Greens or Labor or Left. That's how I, that's the honest truth of how I perceive the potential of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so as a campaigner, I thought this is a really interesting tactic one, because it keeps Julian in the spotlight, it enables us to highlight his cause. We may actually get him in if we work really hard and have a good campaign. Uh, but actually, more importantly than him being one senator in the Senate, you know, which could have mean could mean the balance of power could mean nothing. Could mean mm. nothing. Yeah. Mm. So rather than considering it on that level, I considered it as a tactic around um, supporting Julian Assange's bid for freedom and to live without persecution from the United States of America. Mm. I also considered it as an opportunity for a group of supporters and, and, and uh, people in this country to claim a membership-based um, political party. Yeah. 
that would have Julian Assange and all the great people that were on the council involved yeah. in helping to build something <coughs> collectively. Yeah. That was my hope and that was what I saw as a potential strategy and tactic coming mm. out of it. Yeah. Uh, but what I've come to feel now in my reflection mm. uh, is that my instinct around electoral politics is still the same and that is we have a system that was set up to operate in a representative way that has all sorts of mechanisms in it that make it a, uh, a, a, a government that is run by elites mm. and corporates. Mm. Mm. Yep. And that system is so deeply entrenched and embedded from years of imperialism through our Absolutely. association to the United mm. Kingdom and to America that actually the point that we're at now, that our electoral system is in need of such reform, and this is what the Occupy movement also picked up on. Mm. Um, Perhaps even the Australian psyche. Yeah, um, yeah. A country where for the first 20 years there was not even of television, there mm. wasn't even an Australian accent heard. Exactly. You know, they must have felt so alienated. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I really do feel when I came back to Australia, comparing Australian television to European television, mm. Australian television was screaming at you all the time, telling you what to do, mm. making you feel like you were nobody, making mm. you feel like you were nowhere, making you feel like you didn't really have the right to say anything, ask mm. any questions, mm. have any voice. Well, you don't because it's dominated by Murdoch and all their corporate buddies yes. to get, the, you know, the whole... You know, go read Manufacturing Choms yeah. Chomsky's Manufacturing Consent. Yes. And we're going to produce something called Manufacturing Dissent. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good um, one. Yeah. So, you, did you read um, Asher's uh, Asher Wolf's article about how the, par the, the Pirate Party structured their uh, decision-making mm. process yeah. about preferences, yeah. where everybody got not just all the members even got not just to vote, but to an express an opinion why to yes. actually state why they pulled that all together, got an order out, and then they had a second round where people could, you know, collectively tweak it for very yes. good reasons. Yeah. That that was a beautiful yeah. example of a of a participatory a, democracy absolutely. in action. Absolutely. And would you have liked that for the WikiLeaks party? I think it might. Oh, might that's absolutely. That's what we wanted. Yeah, it might have been yeah. in much fact, more well, appropriate. You know, uh, there were a few people on the council, including myself, whose first option was we preference nobody. Um, Dan wanted that as well. Yeah, that we that we we don't. But to put the ballot paper in, you have to have a preference order. Yeah. So you're actually forced by a system designed to be rigged to participate. So there are real structural issues mm. with how our electoral system works, but also how our political system works. Yeah. Um, Which really bolsters the two-party system and eventually oh, absolutely. gets the little minnows <coughs> fighting with, competing with each other, betrayed. Yep. It was, it's almost like it was, it was set to fail. Of course it is. And, and of course it is. So, you know, my reflection on it is that I actually want nothing to do with that on while it exists in that form. Mm. I want to talk about how we transform our communities and how we uh, can force change through uh, understanding that the power lays with us mm -hmm. uh, rather than uh, believing it, it's sitting in Canberra. Well and, that's right and that's you know, logically the next step with yeah. WikiLeaks. You induce um, invite people mm. to inform themselves. Yes. You met. You give. Uh, you know. That's that's the whole basis of, of uh, a right to know. Yeah. Making informed decisions. Now, once you have in <coughs> informed all those people, and and, and even got a whole sort of um, more um, um, ardent group that 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 religiously do it. That 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 read. And um, three hour to four hours a day for two years, mm. they they certainly can make informed decisions. Yeah. And in that case, then you you know they join a party, yeah. and that collective wisdom, and that's the whole idea of uh, uh, of, of the wiki thing. Mm. Um, but I, I think don't think was, we um, should be joining a party. That's what I'm saying. I, I actually, uh, I well, the conclusion I've reached is that I, I don't think electoral po uh, politics means much at all at this particular point in time. Um, because we are so close to being uh, globalised politically, militarily mm. and in terms of uh, corporatism yes. that 
uh, we need much more uh, resilient resistance mm. and movement mm. in civil society mm. right now mm. uh, because those in power are never going to do what we want them to do. They're yeah. only ever going to do incremental change and they're only ever going to change the face so we think it's a kinder, gentler version. Yes. Uh, it is not in their interest to let us in. Well, um, we were already so, going for the Senate. <coughs> I mean, WikiLeaks was going for the Senate. Yeah, but yeah. I don't think it's in any of their interest to let, let us in. And so I don't think... Uh, I think that that it's very, very difficult to achieve the kind of change that we need in the time frame mm. before they bed everything down under their fascist mm. corporate rule. Mm. Uh, and I think our energy is much better spent mm. at this point in history uh, in in going to the source and that's what WikiLeaks taught us mm. was to go to the source and to tackle the source issues and reveal the truth of the source issues yes. and actually the revelation of the source issue of the state of politics in this country is that it's no different to any other Western democracy it is corrupted mm -hmm. it is embedded it has co-opted the liberal class the big NGOs uh, the civil society movements on the on the larger scale um, a drip fed funding mm. this is an integrated system and instead of knocking on the door asking for our representatives that, that are embedded in it to somehow facilitate change mm -hmm. I actually my reflection on this has been uh, to go back to what we always knew was the truth yeah and that is uh, it's only through the will of the people Mm -hmm. that real change will come to any of this. Yes. And we need to work on the people, not the representatives. Mm. Because once the people mobilise, then the representatives will no longer have a choice. Mm. And mm. we can change systems and we mm. can change behaviour, etc. So you think so that, that that collective wisdom should be channelled back into the system through direct action? Well, not just direct action, but... but community empowerment, mm -hmm. community decision making. Mm. So a decentralisation in some respects. But how do you achieve that if you don't achieve it through government? Because you don't have well, powerful senators. That well, are there are communities that are achieving that in all sorts of ways. Mm. I mean, uh, some of them are doing it through the political system. Mm. An example of that is um, uh, the electorate of Indi mm -hmm. that just ran a community-led uh, campaign and elected an independent who they want to re represent them. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's through the political system. Great. If we can get a hundred of them out mm -hmm. of 150 electorates, then we're on a winner. But that will take a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then there is also communities uh, like the communities down in Gippsland and in northern New South Wales that. A, you know, environmental activists standing next to dairy farmers, locked onto gates, saying to corporations, no, you cannot come in and poison my land. Mm. I'm sorry, yeah. we're not going to let you do yeah. that. Mm. We don't care what you think you have a right to. Mm. And then there are other communities that are, you know, um, they've built their own wind turbines mm. in up near Dalesford in yeah. country Victoria. Yeah. You know, so there are, there are communities that are actually saying we need to get together and remember what we are at the really local level so that we can help the globe yeah um, and it starts by helping ourselves and mm. reclaiming our own rights mm. so I think that um, I think it's wonderful what the, the citizens of Japan did as well yeah and getting a database together yeah with the you know they had scientific people in their you know in their, 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 their towns and yeah. and they got a database together a live update of, of levels of radioactivity yeah. where TEPCO wouldn't divulge that yeah. they were just going and measuring it themselves exactly. and, and putting it up there so that everybody could know yeah um, so I think there is um, there needs to be a shift in the power I'm I'm not for completely. Um, uh, demolishing the state. I'm not suggesting that's what we need to do. Uh, but we have a militarised, surveilled global population uh, whose f everything from their food to their thoughts are being taken over by private corporations. Mm. And we have governments around the world that have achieved nothing mm. in protecting us mm -hmm. from any of that. In fact, they've participated in it, yeah. condoned it, mm -hmm. ordered it. Mm. Um, so. 
I would like to see WikiLeaks get back to uh, releasing information to the public that the public needs. Yeah. I would like Gillian to stop attacking me mm. um, because really, you know, we should be working together. Well, I think he only does that when he hits the whiskey, actually. Yeah, <laughs> it does seem because to have Because it's a just these, these sudden outbursts and then, you know, he gets ridiculed. Yeah. More front than Dolly Parton, etc. Um, and then he shuts up, yeah. you know, so he probably, uh, you know, sobers up the next day and, and, and realises, listens to his advisors, don't do that. And if he does embark upon a campaign for WA, um, then he will definitely have to stop doing that because it's going to make him more and more unpopular. The support for you guys was enormous. Mm. It far outweighed the support for the party. Mm. Um, that was evidenced by the large numbers of people who just left and didn't vote for them. Yeah. The, uh, going back, though, there was one point where I had a dream, uh, and that was, <laughs> and you probably did too, and that was to see both Julian and Scott mm. uh, perform in tandem in the Australian Senate. Mm. I was really, really looking forward to seeing that, especially yeah. if they, you know, they were both up against Abbott. Yeah. And I thought that would be, you know, very, very entertaining for the Australian uh, public. Now, how would you feel if that actually transpires? Good luck. I, I did have that dream at one point of seeing them both in the Senate. I mean, I still think they they would have been far outnumbered, but I did like the idea uh, of that. I think in my scenario, they were facing off against Bob Carr. <laughs> um, but how do I feel about it now? Look, I think that Julian has a great deal to offer intellectually mm -hmm. and I think that he would be by far one of the most intelligent people that we would have in the Senate. Um, it's a shame As would Scott. Well, of course Scott. Yeah, Scott. Scott. I'm we're, imagining. We're, I'm we're imagining we've already Scott's got already there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's rather dangerous, you know, if WikiLeaks Party run in WA, Unless they work uh, mm. something out, Julian is essentially running against Scott. And He's definitely Unless he really against. does promise his preference. Well, he did promise his preferences mm. already, and that didn't happen. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, you know, <laughs> if he, uh, if he, uh, if the, the party uh, preferenced the, the Nationals again, mm. that would just be, a, that could be a real disaster for Scott Ludlam again. again. Yeah, look, it I... It just can't happen. I mean, ideally, if they could work something out, they might both get in. We might see that happen. To be perfectly honest, after everything that's happened, I would be really... Um, I mean, I, I care a great deal about Scott Ludlam. I think he's an absolutely brilliant human being and a brilliant senator. Uh, and I would say that regardless of who he was, you know, whether he was Green ALP or whatever, if he did the work that he's been doing, he, he's a man to be uh, admired. So I would feel slightly strange and potentially disappointed in Scott if he did some sort of campaign tag team with Julian in WA um, because I think Julian and the party's behaviour and Julian's subsequent going out in public and spinning the lies and then attacking us, attacking the Greens, calling us a front for the Greens, manipulating people's personal politics and, you know, and just smearing. Um, I think I would actually be quite disappointed in Scott if he agreed But to then that. he contradicted himself, as Mary Costacadis pointed out, by saying that he had, they'd only run in Western Australia as a favour for Scott. With well, somebody yeah. who couldn't possibly win, yeah, Jerry. Yeah, uh, you know, not very successful. Yeah, not particularly knowledgeable about WikiLeaks, and his wife apparently not very much enamoured by Julian Assange. But uh, the idea was for this, dare I say, dud, to pick up preferences for Scott originally. You know, yeah. and so that made the Western Australia WikiLeaks party a front for the Greens, mm. effectively. So he did contradict himself there. Well, absolutely he did. And that was always the agreement. People knew that when we came on board, we knew that. And a lot of us wouldn't have come on board unless we knew Scott was going to be protected in some way because of everything that he's done, both for Julian and the community. Um, yeah, look, I'd be disappointed if Scott agreed to yeah, tag team and 
if Julian got into the Senate, I'd be concerned. Mm. Kelly Tranter actually expressed some fear over a year ago. Yeah. About she, she had some doubts I, about I, I what have, Julian would do if he yeah, had look, that kind of power. If you'd asked me funny this, enough, if you'd asked me this question before the WikiLeaks party stuff happened, I'd probably would have said, yeah, it'd be great for him to be in the Senate. Mm. Um, but what what the 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 fallout from the party has revealed to me about Julian, both personally and uh, as an a, an activist, and he really he is, you know, he's he says he's a journalist or a publisher or whatever, but his um, behaviour certainly seems to be more activisty, uh, you know, from some of the things I can see. So I, you know, he's a he's a journalist who's also an activist, I guess is how I'd describe him, hmm. which a lot of journalists are becoming, like Alexa O'Brien and you know Kevin Godzola and a whole heap of others. Um, but if he was in the Senate, I would be concerned, and not because of leaking. In fact, I'd be delighted if he got up and gave a maiden speech and named a whole heap of new information from WikiLeaks cables in the Senate. That would make my day. Um, but he did, he did say at one stage that he was going to give every other senator a USB stick and ask them to, uh, to uh, put whatever they could onto it. I thought yeah. that was pretty cheeky. Yeah, so I mean, look, there are, there are things that would be interesting if Julian was in there that, that may frighten some people but would actually excite me yeah. on that level. Uh, but what I would worry about... So that would win you back on side, would it? No, no, <laughs> it wouldn't. And the reason it wouldn't is uh, because I think that there has been demonstrated behaviour uh, that leads me to believe that you know, Julian, while he may be quite radical and innovative in some ways, operates in a very hierarchical thinking structure. Yes, he does. And he operates in a very authoritarian thinking structure. And I think that if he was going to be in the Senate, the only way I would want him there would be perhaps as an independent. Hmm. I think that he uh, will never enable that party to be uh, fully democratic as long as he's involved in it. Yeah. And I also think that some of his politics are definitely right-leaning. Mm. And if he's going to be in there, then people should know that. Mm -hmm. Mm. People should know that. Mm. And, um, you know, while I agree with him on a lot of things, I, I, I worry about his capacity to, um, well, quite clearly lie and betray people that have done nothing but support him. Mm. Or to call them free labour. Or to call them free labour. So what is he going to do in the Senate? How quickly will he turn on people if they don't do what he wants? Well, I find that that was the no. same between John and John and Julian have that in common. Yes. If you did 99%, they would they would whinge at you and never forgive you for the 1% that wasn't perfect. Yes. And I had John go on at me for a year because there was a photograph of David Lee on my website, even though I was criticising him, there was a photograph and he would never forgive him. <laughs> I was always to be doubted. Yeah. But I found that, you know, there was just this... Three, seven... Yeah, that's all right. You can still talk for another five. Yeah. Um, I found that there was always this uh, lack of appreciation, um, yeah. that it was almost supposed to be an honour for us to, you know, break our souls, break up, break up balls, I don't have any, but mm -hmm. to spend everything and more than we had and to, mm -hmm. it was, it was an honour, I mean it, even, uh, you know, there was that verb, big noting themselves, John used that, talking about some of those journalists that hung around Julian in London, they were just big noting themselves. Oh, he thinks Julian is some sort of god. Yeah. You know, he said he wanted to do some fundraising and we said, okay, well we need to set up some meetings and have a maybe a informal gathering and Julian can Skype in and get to know the people and he was like no just give me the name I'll just call them and tell them it's for Julian mm -hmm. and, yeah. we, and we were like what you think Julian you just have to say Julian mm -hmm. and people will jump mm -hmm. how delusional are you yeah, I know. but there was no appreciation really no. for whatever you did no. it was uh, I don't know there's a kind of an ubermensch attitude there which is really, I mean, that's, that's the reason for the hierarchy. Mm. And they will sometimes say things like, you know, you're very intelligent and, you know, you've done a good job and stuff like that. 
but you could always feel that they considered themselves echelons above every other human being and so mm. consequently I really felt with a few experiences I'd had with, with Julian and with John that there was al almost a lack of humanity there. Yeah. Um, they could never say thank you, really, and I mean they're just normal human relations. Well, you know, you know we had a we had a do conversation. So, you do something back, you know. Yeah. You, you do a favour back. You don't see yeah. that the person's really struggling and not even and tell them, oh yeah, you know, I can't quite understand why you're struggling. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> of course you should. Of course you should. Uh, we had a um, a conversation. We both had conversations with uh, John Shipton and Greg Barnes, Kaz and I. Separate conversations, actually, but the same kind of conversations. Uh, when they were trying to convince us about uh, preferencing family first mm -hmm. in, in Victoria. Now, you know, family first is not some liberal, small L liberal Christian group, you know, from some sort of peace community background. These guys are far right. They are homophobic, they're racist, uh, they want to roll back uh, women's rights and uh, abortion rights. Mm. Uh, they have a pretty hardcore Christian agenda. Mm. Um, probably sort of, you know, the Tea Party end, if it was an American yeah. politics. And our uh, number two candidate, Dr. Leslie Cannold, who was running with Julian, Julian's running mate, has built a lifetime of extraordinary work around advocating for women's rights and pro-choice and reproduction and stuff like that. And so, you know, one we were saying to them, why would you do this to the person that is in Victoria that has to campaign and be out in the public when you know that their career is built on this stuff? And then secondly, what part of their agenda in the political structure of this country matches WikiLeaks values? And, you know, they said, they both said to us in various forms, um, but I'll quote John's one because it was the most spectacularly aggravating one, uh, was, oh, this is just a, uh, you, you just have a, a female fetish issue with uh, abortion rights, reproductive rights. I said, you're talking about half the population of the planet's right to determine what happens to their own body. Mm. And what we can contain in our little part of that woods is threatened by this group immensely. Mm. Not to mention the homophobia and the racism that they will participate in. Mm. Um, how can you call that a fetish issue? It's a human rights issue. Mm. And uh, he was like, "Oh, no, you're just fetishizing about it and making it a you know stop making this a gender issue." And it's like I, he said, "You're portraying you're you're portraying Julian. You're putting Leslie Cannold before Julian." Mm. And um, Kaz had a beautiful response to him which was so you think my daughter's rights to her own body are less important than your son's right to live outside an embassy mm. Mm. well that's right but you know it's very interesting that you should say and that he does think that it, of course he does <laughs> but it's very interesting you should say that because on John Keane's article David Hayden made a comment and there was a reply by uh, ed educated class was this the pseudonym of the day right and it was clear it was, it was clear it was John Shipton it was clear it was somebody who who had been on the council yeah because he he said or it said that you guys had voted for um, to preference family first. Yes, which I came into that. It was an absolute lie. Yeah, I came into that conversation and corrected that. Yeah, I mean, there's been a there's been an attempt to, and I was told that I was duped. <laughs> yes, by whom? Um, duped. Duped. By yeah. the WikiLeaks party. Oh. No, no, no. By the <laughs> by the um, uh, principled faction. <laughs> I did, I did really appreciate Marsha, Martha Mitchell's article talking about the gaming faction. Yeah. Because it did present... It had a few inaccurate assumptions in it that, that were wrong, but yeah. But I liked that 
Yeah, they were the gaming faction. Because they were the original faction. <laughs> exactly. They were the That's secret faction. <laughs> That's what we saw. We'll get the rats out of Canberra and then we'll put our own rats up to the carpet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, really? Bloody yeah. hell. Yeah. I had an identity crisis for yeah. a few days. Like it was. I thought, what's wrong with me? You know, what's wrong with me? I didn't know whether I was Arthur or Martha. I wasn't eating, I wasn't sleeping, and I realised yeah. it was an identity crisis. Yeah. Because I had really um, given everything mm. to WikiLeaks and the party, you know, what, yeah. I, what I've done, making 80 films. Fuck. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I had, I believed those values. Yeah. I lived those values. Yeah. And I evangelised those values to some extent. Didn't, you know, some people didn't want to hear any more about it. Yeah. Um, I did have whinges as well, because there was things that weren't, you know, always good. And it was very, mainly about this elitism yeah. and this lack of empathy. Um, and take, 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 you know. Yeah. Um, and not much support, no support at all, mm. you know, to help None. with what I eat, to put, yeah. in spite of Christine Assange's advice, yeah. help her, put her on the payroll, yeah. help produce the I mean, thing. Christine's been the only yes. one that's helped. Yeah. You know, they haven't helped. Yeah, well, she was telling Julian that people were talking to me, and so, you know, they should help me out. I was getting a camera for Christmas and all that kind of thing. But when everything crashed like that and turned inside out and suddenly there were leaks coming out about the WikiLeaks party, mm. everyone was laughing. Yeah. All these friends of mine that weren't really involved, but I, you know, shared my, I shared my stories with, they were all laughing about it, you know, yeah. and I, you know, I, I really, I just went, went to ground, I think. I yeah. Did. And I, it was comforting in a way to come down and see you yeah. guys because you guys had all gone, a number of people had gone through the same thing. Yeah. We who um, believed in this and worked the most for this, that we had been totally betrayed. Yeah. And, and duped. Yeah. And duped. And used. Yeah. yeah. You know. And I don't feel used for any of the stuff that I've done for WACA. <coughs> I did that, Kaz and I started that, do that, continue to do that because, you know, it's the right thing to do. It's the it's the impulse to bring change and to do that stuff. But the WikiLeaks party, you know, that had a specific agenda um, and was to be a foundation to be modelled elsewhere, that was something different. Uh, and that part of it, we were completely used. In fact, they used everything that we'd done with our hearts, with love, um, to create it. Well, I mean, even the journalism with the heart thing, yeah. you know, it ended up, I mean, yeah. for me it was journalism with a heart, you know, yeah. and for other people who, um, Al uh, Andrew, yeah. you know, Somerset Bean, he, he, he brought out that logo, he put that heart into the hourglass, yeah. and it really didn't belong there. No. No, it belonged in Somerset Bean. I know. <laughs> But so, yeah, I guess, I mean, we'll all get over it. We'll all get over it. I mean, I don't want to give up either. I, how could I? I do give a shit. Yeah. Well, shit. as far as I'm concerned, the WikiLeaks party should just, you know, they should have a ceremony and bury it, uh, and it should be done with, and we should get back to building autonomous, interconnected movements that work to bring about change, both to the political system, but also within our own communities uh, because we're not strong enough yet mm. you know we're not strong enough that's the problem well we will be yeah, yeah. better hurry up <laughs> yeah all right i'm fine <laughs>